Brand is the relational alchemist, which uh, when we connected on Facebook, I was like, hmm, I want to find out more. Uh, so first, uh, Steph Zafandos, welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, man. So uh, Steph and I connected uh, Facebook. I don't know. They changed something with their algorithm. Um, I must be getting like 12 plus friend requests a day for the last like month or so. And uh, it's really interesting because it's people that we have a ton of connections with and, and I try to like, I go through and I uh, see who they are and Steph came across, we have like, I don't know, hundreds of friends in common and I'm looking at what this guy does. I'm like, how in the world have we not connected before? And uh, we had an awesome chat and I was like, you, you have to be on our podcast. So he graciously said yes. And um, yeah, Steph, before we jump in, I'd love for you to share um, what you're passionate about today and, and the light that you're bringing into the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, what am I passionate about today? It's a big question. I was actually asked that, um, uh, two days ago by a, a dear friend uh, across the other side of Australia. And, and I was giving that some deep thought and, and really for me, it's about, uh, assisting others in finding their own light in finding, their own connection piece to themselves and to the world and then how they can serve not only themselves their own growth their own journey but also others and and for me what runs parallel to that is uh and it, it sounds maybe a little bit cliche but i have a very strong disposition to be a voice for the voiceless particularly earth like i have a very strong attachment to to nature to earth i'm in the ocean like i'm pointing down there because it's the ocean is not too far from my house down this way very strong connection to ocean, very strong connection to mountains. And for me, it's like I, every time I'm in that space, I'm either near the ocean or in the mountain, it's like nothing else exists. Mm. And <clears throat> it's the most amazing, most profound, most connected feeling. Um, so that is what I'm deeply passionate about uh, these days. And tell people about the work that you're doing with uh with human beings across the planet because you are just you have your hands in so many different uh projects but um i know they all stem from that that passion of yours yeah thank you yes so uh, fundamentally it's really assisting people in cultivating healthy relationships in their lives or whether that be a relationship to themselves to an idea to their purpose purposes uh, to a dream, to other people, to their beloved, to something of any, anything of importance to them. So essentially it's about carving out a healthy path within that relational dynamic and, and how to do that, how to embody that, how to be with that, how to feel that, how to express that, how to communicate that, how to connect to that uh, fully and completely. So that's a, that's a very deep exploration of mm -hmm. self ultimately. So um, that's, that's the, the work I do with, with human beings and sentient beings in that space. <laughs> sentient beings. I love that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our listeners are going to love that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, relationship is something Guy and I speak about all the time. And, and one of the things that, that really resonated, uh, when, when I spoke with you is that you do have this very holistic approach to relationship. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times people hear the word relationship and their mind automatically goes to um, intimate love relationships. And I love even the first one that you said is relationship to self. Um, and that's something that, that we talk about here all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to um, ask you something because it's just so present. I, I um, read this little... Uh, paragraph today to my group um, online from this book called The Search by Osho. And uh, the whole thing was about our relationship to ego. And I think it'd just be fun to kind of start an exploration uh, of that. So one of the things that he said was that the only time uh, we experience conflict is when we're an ego. In fact, the ego, the way he describes it is, you know, when, when we are not in conflict, the mind disappears. In other words, uh, the mind attached to the ego disappears and it's almost like pedaling on a bike. You know, when you stop pedaling or when the mind stops or the fighting and resistance stops, then the bike eventually disappears. And so 
I'd love to, to get your feedback on it. You know, uh, I'm sure you work with people on their relationship to ego and, and how to expand that relationship. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I read somewhere once that the, the ego is the, is the soul expressing itself in its infancy. So it still hasn't matured. So it still, it still plays a critical role in our lives. It's something of great importance. For me, assisting people in understanding as opposed to expelling hmm. their ego or ridding the ego, because like anything, everything in the body uh, has its place. Everything serves a purpose. Uh, everything carries value. And in the in the psychological realm of our expression or our, our beingness, um, ego has a role as well. And it's a vital role. It's how we connect to it. So for me, the the, the, the fastest way to have a healthy ego is to explore the shadow elements of self is to create wholeness in our being, in our expression, our understanding of the world, in our models of reality, in, in the way we relate to ourselves. And the way to create wholeness is to explore those forgotten parts of ourselves, is to explore mm -hmm. those, uh, those parts of ourselves that we ignore, that we don't really accept, that we don't really understand that we wish to discard of because we're either embarrassed of them or we're scared of them exploring our fears exploring what ails us what challenges us uh exploring even at, at certain depth uh, our traumas and, and what we're actually really avoiding in life and the more we do that uh, i believe and through my experience as well is the more we come into that contact that whole contact with the ego and the ego seems to soften it doesn't become so defensive hmm. it doesn't become so volatile uh, in its posturing in our own lives and in our relationships. And when that ego softens, uh, you know, everything changes. Everything changes with respect to how we choose to move through the world, how conscious we are or where we are of our own selves, but also our relationships and what's important to us in life. But also we are able to connect to people at a far deeper and richer level mm -hmm. because that ego isn't in the way they're trying to protect, trying to protect, trying to protect what it does not understand, what it does not know, what it is not familiar with. So we essentially make the unfamiliar familiar through shadow exploration as one means, as one, as one sure way to uh, get reacquainted with the fullness of self. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. There's a book uh, Ryan Holiday wrote uh, a while back called Ego is the Enemy. And everyone, it got passed around, you know, I think in entrepreneurial communities, people were all really excited by it. And as soon as I read the title, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I love that you said, you know, it's, a, it's in the infancy stage. Like, that's an infancy conversation to me, this, this whole conversation yeah. of infancy, of uh, uh, enemy. And I thought to mm. myself, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh, I know kind of where he is on his journey. Not that it's wrong. Like, listen, yeah, sure. he's having a beautiful exploration, and I'm sure – 10 years from now or whenever it is, he's going to write a book that pretty much, you know, goes further into that um, about the relationship he's created with his ego. So I really love that you, you talk about that um, specifically about the exploration of the shadow side of the ego. Let's, let's um, since you brought that up, go into that a little bit. Mm. What does that get to look like for people? Cause some, someone might be on here and going, okay. Um, you know, I, I get this whole concept of, exploring because to the ego right if it's unknown it's going to scare the shit out of it and then all the defenses and protectors and all that stuff inside that you've programmed in your body um, are, are going to come up so what does that possibly get to look like for someone solid question man um our brains are, are pattern recognition machines mm. like um not not to uh place a, a mechanistic slant on our brains by saying machines, but we're, we're very good. We're very, very good and very f efficient at recognizing patterns. When we pay attention to the patterns in our lives, of course, <laughs> <laughs> when, when the ego intervenes, uh, it's, uh, it does a great job of protecting what it doesn't understand and what yeah. it fears as well. And I don't mean to talk about the ego as if it's separate to us, it's just the various moving parts are in, at a psycho-emotional level within our, our consciousness or our realm of awareness. Um, and ego is just one of them. It's all connected though. But patterns. So if we are, relationships are the best place to start, in my opinion. Um, and that's, again, relationship to self, relationship to whatever's important in our lives. And there's various areas that we have in our lives. 
Um, but intimate romantic relationships can be a very hard, um, profound, confronting triggers for us. And if we look back at our relationships, if we can notice patterns, patterns of behaviour under particular stress points or scenarios or challenges that we face, and we can look at those patterns and say, okay, what, what's, what's happening here? It's an examination, it's an exploration. What is happening? What is occurring? Why am I behaving this particular way? And this behavior, what is it eliciting in the other, which is a mirror of myself, essentially? Mm. And what, what can I gain from this in terms of what wisdom and knowledge and lessons and experiential wisdom can I gain from understanding these patterns? And what am I ignoring within myself? And see, you know, the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves lead to uh, the quality of the lives that we actually experience. So asking these types of questions as a starting point, in ter- as an entry-level starting point in terms of examining shadow is looking at patterns in relationship when, um, when we behave uh, or how we behave rather under pressure or under challenge or duress. That's a really great starting point because that will give an indication as well to what we are perhaps ignoring, what we perhaps suppressing or pressing within ourselves and not really paying enough attention to. Yeah, really, really great. One, one thing that I uh, will add to that is a great place. People are like, well, what are the patterns and what are the things? Um, I'll always point to anything that's a knee jerk reaction for you. So a lot of the mm-hmm. times we're in, you know, these things that are stressful in relationships that the issue for a lot of people is that they don't see them as stressful. It just becomes so commonplace. Yeah, it's just, you know, my wife and I fight or she nags or my kids annoy the shit out. Like whatever it is, right. It's just so like, they are the way they are, or it is the way it is. And because of that, the pattern just gets so locked in that it almost doesn't feel to someone like a stress. It just, that's the way my life is. So another access point could be, you know, what are the knee jerk reaction things? Anytime to me, someone asked me, you know, when, what is my definition of ego? Um, and, And while I have many ways that I can describe it, I think anytime you're in full autopilot, in other words, you are not there, your highest self, your aware self is not there. To me, that's some state of ego, right? Like I've checked out ego, you drive this bus, you know, you take us wherever. So um, yeah, I would just offer people like, that's a great, great place to look. And I do agree, Steph, I think that intimate relationships as well as familial relationships. So um, <laughs> one of the things we, we say to our clients all the time is like, you wanna know how transformed you actually are, go home and live with your parents for a week. Um, <laughs> because, you know, they just, the people we know the best, we, we let go the most and they are able to push our buttons the most and things like that. So um, specifically with people that you work inside of passion and purpose, mm. okay? So you said, you know, people who are uh, finding their purpose or or crystallizing their purposes. What are some of the things, because a question I think we probably get asked a lot is, you know, how do I find my purpose and how do I know that I'm going after the right passion and things like that? I'm sure you get asked that all the time. Um, Are there any tips or tools, advices, questions you can offer people? Yeah, I mean, you can look at, again, asking questions is a great starting point. Yeah. Um, and the reason being is because it evokes a curiosity and it evokes uh, us beginning to pay attention to what matters to us. So mm. one of the types of questions that we're asking ourselves with respect to purpose or respect to passion, respect to what deeply inspires us, paying attention to what do we think about the most? What do we converse about the most? Where are we spending our money? Where are we spending our time and energy? Where are we, where are we daydreaming? What are we daydreaming about? Mm-hmm. What are we dreaming about? You know, what, what, are we, what experiences are we pursuing or are we really interested in? What are we, when we're speaking about a subject matter, well, what do we talk about the most? But where are we most passionate or excited about what we speak to? And we start to put these, these um these patterns again into a sequence and we begin to notice something quite profound about what it is that we really enjoy doing and why why we're here and simply asking the question on a regular basis, who am I and why am I here? Hmm. And what really matters to me? And if I could, if I could leave a legacy, here's a really, here's a really powerful question. What would you do if you could live for a thousand years? If you would, if you would live to a thousand years, 1000 years in a healthy state, 
as you are now in a healthy state of being for 1,000 years, what would you want to do with your life? What legacy would you wish to leave behind? There's something beyond your, just yourself, but also that feeds into you and serves you. I mean, there's like, like you said, there's so many different ways to, you know, throughout every single one of my programs, I, I have various ways to discover purpose. And there's a, there's a process that you can go through. Um, to assist to assist you in gaining clarity because it's all about clarity. It's all about yep. knowing self as well as you can. And the, the, the greater and the deeper and the more profound, the more robust you know yourself, the the faster you can reach a state of actually understanding this is who I am. This is what's important to me. This is what I want. This is what drives me. Now how, the next step is or the next question is how do I take action, meaningful transformative action to actually live this embodied state? And that's that's a tough one for most people, I think, because it's it's so difficult to break habits. It's so difficult to go against the norm. Yeah. It's so difficult to uh, break break those habits that have been entrenched in us for so long, and the fears that are around that, the fears of being rejected, the fears of being abandoned for doing something different, doing something new, being out of the out group, not being in the in group. Like that, in and of itself, is like psychological despair. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you're sort of losing your social cohesion. So what does that all mean for everybody? So there's, there's a lot to, to tackle with, but, but knowing self and gaining confidence and clarity in self, I teach us a lot, especially with the men that I work with, is really standing um, strong in their, their own selves, taking ownership of who they are, being vertical, being stable, and achieving that or embodying that by having clarity, by again, knowing self and asking very specific questions about who we are in this world. Yeah. Uh, as you were talking, something was coming through, which is to get to this level that we're talking about, to really be out of the herd and uh, cultural norms and conversations and, and that feeling of belonging, you know, to be someone who is truly pursuing their passion and purpose because that is just divinely in them, um, you have to be great with being alone. And, oh, yeah. and that's what just came through. It's like, you know, it is scary to a human being. And again, this goes back to kind of that egoic mind aspect, right? Like the ego wants to belong because that's where it feels safe. So if we're running in the stream with everyone, there's safety in that, right? Like pursue Absolutely. your money by doing this. Like, okay, others are doing this. Okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable here. I got people around me. But to stand up and go, you know what, this doesn't work for me. I'm heading in that direction, up that mountain, and I'm walking that mountain alone. That can be really, really scary for people. And so I think the, you know, people who I consider are in the one, two, three percent of the world have gotten to a place, some of them, where alone is something that we're really comfortable with. Yeah. Because alone is where we can find our magic. Alone is where we can find our, our true purpose. You know, like I was in the jungle in Colombia. Um, we did five plant ceremonies in a week. And I can tell you that there are experiences there where you feel so, so connected to your soul. Where your soul or God, I don't know what you want to call it, is literally just communicating to you. And some of these things that it communicates, you're like, that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like, I'm not going to do that. And I, I know because I've done it multiple times that every time we, we, we speak that into existence or we declare that or take action in it, um, there is this aspect of me every single time that is just like this scared little boy that goes, no, like we can't, we can't do that. That is impossible. Like we can't do that. And yet you can stand in that in that power, in that, that mm -hmm. grace, in that solidness that you are and speak that into existence. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure you, you've had many of these experiences where it's just really, that's the stuff that sets you on different paths in a very, very powerful way. Um, I'm curious because <clears throat> something that's been coming up a lot with our clients and uh, people that are in my network is this conversation about uh, last year and last year being this very turbulent, um, I, I, I still think for a lot of us, it, it was very beautiful. It was just a lot, <laughs> like a lot of stuff kind of came up to the surface. And um, this year from, from what I'm seeing from the experience, 
people are becoming a lot more settled and grounded and it feels like all that work that was done in 2017 is is kind of uh, bubbling to the surface. I'm curious, was there one or two massive uh, breakthrough transformations that you experienced in 2017 that you're starting to really understand what maybe happened now, a year later? <laughs> it's an understatement. <laughs> Say it again. That's an understatement. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I don't, it's, it's funny. I like, there's just this energy. Yeah. And I just, everyone I ask, it's like yeah. everyone's kind of gone through something. So it's, it's been really, it's opened yeah. up some really interesting conversations. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I mean, I, I, it's interesting what you said about, you know, the fear taking a stronghold of us. And, you know, when we, when we walk alone, when we're in that stillness and that silence, and this is very relevant to last year for me in particular, there's, there's, there's a tremendous fear. But parallel to that fear is a, is a, is a deep liberation and freedom that, that also transpires and it's felt. And that's, uh, that's beautiful. We, we begin to deconstruct those limiting beliefs around um, how, how we hear, why are we hear, what, you know, what are our models of reality that shape our experiences. For me, last year was very turbulent, very uh, extremely volatile, um, confronting on so many different level, levels. It was... Uh, multiple ego deaths I was going deep into my own psyche and into my shadow self again for the second time in 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 three years but very deep like very deep uh in in that particular space um to the point where you know physical death was a very real option wow. uh, because it was so confronting and i and i chose to remain with that in that in that um in that state of consciousness and um you know Something very interesting as well, and I chose to. Uh, I moved through a cycle. I moved through a cycle of uh, understanding myself, but I made a commitment to myself and a promise, and I was very convicted in this that I would remain in this space for as long as I needed to, to until I felt completely liberated, until it, it turned over, uh, no matter what, mm. irrespective, irrespective of what was going on in life, irrespective of where it took me. And of course, making that decision was a very subjective and personal decision. It's not something that everybody can make um, because it is highly dependent on who you are as an individual and you know, the, the, where you are with respect to relation, relating to self. Uh, but last year, was a, 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 whilst it was very confronting and once again, very liberating and not only liberating, but profound insight that came through with that because I stuck with it. I was able to stick with it. Um, and, and the multiple, you know, I was confronted with death on, on multiple levels. Uh, and that in and of itself, you know, the, the death of the old, death of the old. And, um, you know, we're sp speaking to, to plant medicines and speaking to medicine per se. Like last year, I had an experience with 5-MeO DMT, which is one of the most, uh, if not the most po potent, pertinent, powerful uh, medicine on this planet. And that was a... That was not even, I'm not even going to bother explaining that in words, in any, any form of verbiage, that's for sure. But um, that was life-changing as well. But, but let me be really clear, that was at the tail end of deep work done in this um, familiar or regular uh, state of consciousness. Hmm. Uh, and that's, that's a big thing that I advocate is... I'm, I'm all for plant medicines and I believe in plant medicines deeply and have for a long time. Uh, but there's nothing more real and powerful than, than doing the work in this familiar state of consciousness first to integrate, to buffer, to connect to at a deeper level. If we go back a few hundred years ago, a couple of thousand years ago, when our ancestors were engaged in those spaces, in those ceremonies, they didn't have the pollutants in our atmosphere. They didn't have mm. toxins in our, in our waterways. They didn't have all the, uh, all the petrochemicals that, that surrounded their environment, that influenced their biology, that changed their physiology, that made them unhealthy. They didn't have the complex social structures and layers that we have today. They, they weren't infiltrated with that complexity. Um, excuse me, in those, those externalized fears. Sure, so every society had problems or issues or disconnections, disharmony, but not to the level that we probably have today. So when they would take those plant medicines, it was a very different experience. Um, I think that the amount of darkness that each individual in society has that, that is suppressed today in today's world is very fucking dangerous. 
And when we, when we take those plant medicines, we expose them very rapidly. And most people can't handle that. Yep. So it, it's something like I'm really, um, I, know, I was just really, I get excited speaking about this because I think we can achieve so much in, in this familiar state of consciousness if we allow ourselves to through meditation, through breath work, through focused work, through whatever it may be. And then we utilize plant medicines as this beautiful technology or tool or to take us even deeper, man, like where you've been last week and just that's, that's power, man. Like that is, that is optimizing our being, you know, like that's, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the shit right there. <laughs> it's so it's so accurate. And one of the things, so we took uh, <laughs> there was ten of us that went into the jungle together, Amazing. and uh, eight of those are people that we were working with for. No, sorry, six of them we've been working for uh, anywhere from six to six months to almost three years. Uh, some <laughs> of these people, so. It wasn't, you know, people that were like, hey, come to the jungle, you know, um, it, and, and even the ones, the, the other two that um, have not been working with us, uh, super connected, we did a two month integration before we ever made it to the jungle, did work with them uh, at, at the jungle. And then we're doing two months of work with them after to actually help integrate all this stuff. And, and I think it, on the head, I think a lot of people go there or even like 5-MEO, because 5-MEO, I mean, you really don't have to have anything prepared for, right? Like that thing's going to shoot you out of a cannon no matter what. Um, And without an understanding, like I've done ceremonies where I've spoken to people afterwards. I'm like, oh my God, how was it for you? And they'll tell me what they saw. And I'm like, and? And they're like, I I don't know what it means. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing this? Like, I don't even understand why you, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like the, that, (laughs) That work gets to be done when you've done, like like Steph is saying, enough work here where you have enough understanding of why you're maybe having certain experiences or seeing certain things or can guide this experience, not with 5-MEO, obviously, but with, with ayahuasca, like you can guide it in some way, shape or form where you can get that deep, deep insight because it really just removes this logic brain part and allows you to experience things so fully um, Mm. in a way that it's like getting decades of lifetime. I mean, ancestral lifetimes handled and completed uh, in a span of a few hours. So it really is just magical. You, I want to go back Mm. to one thing that you said. Um, You said that it, in this experience of, of uh, you know, egoic death and even real death being a possibility. Uh, You said something to yourself, I will stay in this no matter what. And I know because I've been going through it for many, many years, there's this conscious decision, which you said, like, I will stay with this no matter what, that most human beings are terrified in making that choice. What do you think had you be able to go through that and, and stick to the process, no matter how painful or turbulent or volatile it became? Yeah, it's probably, you know, it's probably a number of things, man. Um, one of them is the, the exploration of um, the physical realm. So like I, over the last probably 20 odd years, I've been really pushing my own boundaries of what I'm, what I'm capable of physically. Mm. Um, and there's a carryover. There's a parallel drawn into the emotional world, the, the relational world, Absolutely. the psychological world, um, because that's all integrated in that, in that physical pushing or that physical exploration. So that's, been, that's, that's a part of it um, which would have supported, uh, which did, not would have, which did support me in that space. Because I'd have a reference point where I'd, I'd been through intense pain and difficulty and challenge through physical exertion or physical exploration of high intensity or enduring, enduring intensity, um, where I could lean on that when I thought I couldn't keep going. Just a little bit more, you know, a little bit more varied perspectives that I would take. Like, uh, for example, you know, just taking life eight seconds at a time, literally just eight seconds at a time to just keep me present, keep me grounded, keep me mm. present, keep me really, really present. Um, 
you know, I had a, I also had a mentor last year. I'm going to call him more of a savior, but um, <laughs> a, a mentor in that space as well. I had good social circles, although although I did isolate myself a lot, a great deal. I isolated myself a great deal. I, I utilized various tools where I could. I spent a great deal of time in nature. I moved my body. You know, I expressed, I journaled, I meditated a lot extensively. Um, you know, meditation again, just quiet time going with it. I allowed myself to express. I allowed myself to be present to whatever it was that I was feeling and remain as strong as I could in that presence. That doesn't mean not breaking down, not crying, not being emotional, but be, but, but remaining with that pain as unknown as it was mm. until it became somewhat familiar. And then in that familiarity, I softened a little bit more and I could gain access to the core of that pain. And that was for me very, very powerful is gaining access to the core of that pain because it gave me um, permission to understand who I was and it gave me permission to equate myself with the very dark aspects of self, um, the, the, the deep the, the nuances within the shadow self. Um, because I've, I've been doing work for, for quite some time uh, in that space. So uh, it was, this was all very new for me because was, these were new feelings and experiences combined that I'd never really felt before. So there was a number of different tools that I leveraged. I did a, a Facebook Live uh, probably about four weeks ago, somewhere, somewhere on my YouTube channel, um, but it was on, it was a six-step cyclical process that I sort of stumbled upon, but then began to become very conscious of it. And I would move through these six stages. And as I moved through these six stages, I became more empowered. And each stage would break me, break me, break me, recover, break, recover, break, recover, shatter open, crack open, expose, be with, let's do it again. And to, you know, to renew yourself. You know? So it's like, you know, some going for a long run and having water and then and have maybe some food or calories and then feeling energized again and being able to keep going. Not to say that you're not hurting, but you're still able, you just, you take, take the edge off. Um, so that, that really assisted me as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's this, there's a beautiful concept I learned. Well, the phrasing of, I learned probably like a year and a half ago, uh, this concept mm. of destroy to create mm. and, you know, just simply two things can occupy the same space at the same time. And that works yeah. in the physical realm as well as the spiritual and emotional realm. And so when you're attached to a program, uh, a way of seeing life, a way that you process information, whatever it is, that no longer allows for something else to show up in that space. And in destruction, especially when life is, is in all intents and purposes, actually looking really good, you know, you have your dream clients, your business is growing, physically you feel really fit, uh, your relationships are, are in what most consider like a really good state and then everything just gets like spun on its head and it just throws you and you're like, whoa, I thought this was all really great mm. and it's like, can you still yeah. let go of yeah. all the stuff that is great for the greater? And I think for a lot of people, like, I mean, most people don't even get to that state, right? Because they're trying to remove all the shit that they fucking hate from their lives. But in this state of just growth and expansion that I think the ride that we've, you know, fully signed up for, for the next millennia, um, there, there is this feeling of like, well, this is really good. Like, I really like this. Why do I have to destroy this? And just like everything else, you know, like snakes shed their skin and we were actually in the jungle and there was these beautiful bamboo trees, like, like just gorgeous, you know, thick bark bamboo trees. Mm. And you watch them too. They peel, they, they uh, shed their external layer. And I'm watching this, obviously you're on plant medicine. And one of the cool things about this place that we go to is that uh, all the ceremonies are actually done in the day, which is very, very unusual. Mm. So you're very active, your body's very awake and you hey, get to wow. basically like Garden of Eden and have the world speak to you. And so you're sitting in front of this massive bamboo tree, just kind of like swaying majestically in the air and you're watching and you just get messages. Like, like the bamboo tree is literally talking to you and it's like, notice how I shed my skin and notice how I move and notice how I'm this. And you're just like, holy shit. And then, you know, it's all just reciprocating back to you. Um, and there's, there's something that you said about, you know, you started the conversation by saying like, I've been testing my physical capabilities 
for the last 20 plus years. And, and it's something really important to understand that, you know, when we talk about have it all, it really comes from the state of like, you know, when your body is in physical shape, like peak physical condition, that transfers to your mind, that transfers to your emotional state, that transfers to all of these other things. And it, it was beautiful that you said, like, I got to lean on that because that's an experience that I had in the real world in testing my physical body. So it's like, you know, you can get through something. You yeah. know, like we had people yeah. in, in plant ceremony and plant ceremony. It, in one of those five, you're getting your ass fucking kicked. Like, like it's just going to, it doesn't matter. I don't care what condition you're in. It, it's yeah. going to, because it's all experiences. And so those of us that have, uh, there's a bunch of people that went for the first time and it was just so beautiful to watch because they've done, like you said, the work here where they have noticed that they have these other layers and levels that they can attain. You know, ayahuasca will take you to a basement and then show you that you have another basement and another basement they, and another they, basement and what you can straight, live, yeah. yeah, and what you can get through and live through and, and pers- not even persevere through, but like ascend through is just you, you come out of it and you, you're just Superman or Superwoman. And I love that you brought that to the, uh, to the conversation because it really is, you know, we started this like, how do you stick to it? Um, one of the things that I've kind of uh, visualized in my head is, you know, like um, dogs that have the electric collar and the electric fence. And then there was this uh, part in uh, the, the first Jurassic Park where they would talk about the raptors and how they would test the electric fence never in the same place twice, right? To me, any sort of growth, and I'm not saying that all growth needs to be experienced through pain. I've had some of the biggest growth ever experienced through while I'm feeling amazing and and in flow. Absolutely. There is though this this, um, ability that as human beings we get to create of being in the resistance. And I don't even want to call it pain. It's just being in the resistance in that whatever that feeling is for you expressed in your body. That if you choose in growth, you get to stand in that resistance. In fact, Mm. you must be willing to stand in that resistance longer than is going to be comfortable for you, however that looks for you. And Steph, I think Mm. you just highlighted it so brilliantly. Like, I mean, you were faced with death, like real physical death and still standing in there knowing that on the other side of this, something magical, beautiful, your next shedding of your skin to express something even greater in your life. And I think, and, and I'm curious if this was your, uh, one of the things kind of like the carrots, if you will, is that you live for others more than self. Like you're all about assisting others on this journey. So we kind of know like in that fact, was that, was that present for you as you were going through this? Yeah. Yeah. And it was definitely, um, I, I used, I utilize and leverage that as um although it was it was difficult at times because it was the pain was so strong the fear Mm. was so strong it was so unknown i was like so confused what the fuck is going on here it it brought me back it brought me back into self and i'd be oscillating between just wanting to shift the pain but wanting to stay in there long enough to really grasp it and become one with it as opposed to it uh mastering uh, my own faculties and and me never and me being so distant from it to having that thought that you know is glimpses of it if i remain with this long enough uh i'll either it would be make or break you know it's flow Mm. or die like i'm either going to flow through this and there's going to be some magic at the end of it and i'm going to and i was literally thinking this in the midst of it i'm going to be able to serve others so deeply with this and it may be you know months or years until I, i fully if ever grasp the importance of it and that's okay but just having this experience the the and coming through it being a different person and then mm-hmm. and shedding those layers it's just it's only going to benefit every single human being i come into contact with mm-hmm. uh include included in my uh, inclusive of my own path of course yeah yeah it's so huge um i, I think a lot of the times we don't when we don't have that conversation it makes it very easy to turn the other way um, yeah. And I think when it is about 
you know, even if, if, if you're not doing what, what Stefan and we're doing, uh, which, you know, maybe you're not coaching other people along this path, you have a family, you know, you have parents, you have siblings, you might have kids, a husband or a wife. Um, Friends you can, get, yeah, your community your your, you know, whoever you roam around with, like I, the one thing that, I mean, many things astound me about plant medicine, but the one thing, whenever I come back is there are so many things that I wasn't consciously working on that are still somehow so different and impacting the people around me so differently. Mm. You know, I, I came back last year. I come back this year. Uh, my kids, it's not like I shared something with them where I'm like, Hey, you know, so I realized this about our relationship or any, they're just obsessed with me. You know, they're like, they want to be around me all the time. Um, my wife asked me questions that she's never asked, or we get to have conversations that we've never gotten to have. There's just this complete and utter energistic shift when we sign up for and do this kind of work at a really, really deep level. Um, different clients get to show up, different opportunities get to show up. I mean, we don't necessarily understand most of the time what the work is now, what, what the impact of the work is anyway. Um, it's just really beautiful to have that outlook, I think, and it makes uh, going through that pain that we were talking about just a, a lot more palatable. Mm, mm, absolutely, and more meaningful as well, or substance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Steph, I'm, I'm curious um, if you can share a little bit about some of the projects that you're working on. I know you're doing some really, really cool things uh, that are very, very forward thinking. So I'd love for you to, to share a little bit about that yeah, as well. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of the projects within my own um, brand, for lack of a better term, that I'm, that I'm working on is uh, I have a, a couple of programs that are specifically designed for men, how to cultivate uh, healthy maleness or masculinity in today's world for self and fathers, of course, and for the expanded global community, global family. Uh, Conscious Warrior and Reclaim Your Kingdom. Uh, and really delving deep into what it means to be a healthy masculine man in today's world um, and assisting men in redefining that for themselves and, and, and getting real clarity on who they want to be and who they are. And so it's not just about purpose. It's far more than that. It's, uh, it's also releasing demons and structures that, that hold us back, learning beliefs, uh, gaining wisdom and knowledge around how to relate to self and to significant others as well without being tainted and, and, implicitly affected uh, by limiting beliefs and fears and, and pain points and traumas and so forth that drive us stepping into our courage and not being part of the status quo. Mm. A couple other projects and programs as well as around how to cultivate healthy relationships in life in just in general. And there's, I've created models around all of this as well. So really refining um, life models. So I have a sovereign leadership model, how to create harmonious balance in our lives, conscious communication, and each model has anywhere from sort of 10 to 14 tenets or principles that um, can be extrapolated to, to assist us in understanding what it means to be uh, very effective and present in those spaces. Um, working on some really exciting things as well, uh, part of an organisation, uh, one of the core members of an a organisation or company called HighVibe.network, which is essentially grounded in the blockchain um, and creating our own cryptocurrency as well. But it's all about um, connection. It's all about creating high vibrational experiences for individuals, for bringing communities together. Um, we've got some amazing uh, algorithmic specialists and tokenomics experts, etc., working this to make it, to present a very unique uh, model to the world. One of our platforms is called idevelopmyself.com. And um, you and I are definitely going to have more conversations about this. Um, but it essentially it's a platform for authors, um, community leaders, uh, coaches, community builders, um, affiliates, users to, to come on and really share abundance and wisdom in so many different ways. Like essentially we, we pay people to learn, mm. um, which is really, really cool and something very different. And it's, we've got very varied categories around personal growth and personal development. So it's called idevelopmyself.com. And in that space, again, we, we, it's almost like the Netflix of personal development. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, really exciting thing. So we've got a, a pre-sale, um, a private pre-sale in three weeks. 
um, our official public ICO is July 15th. So, um, yeah, very, very exciting times. And be because of the magnitude of what we're doing in that space and what we're, who we're bringing together, <clears throat> it's just going to be amazing. It's going to be done very differently to what's currently out there, which isn't really much of this. Um, and it's going to be really high-quality learning, high-quality uh, high quality interaction as well. And the community building aspect is, is just phenomenal. And I'm very excited for it to, to launch very soon. Yeah. So we're working very diligently on that. Yeah. So cool. I was looking at uh, when we spoke, I was just looking at all the, the information about it. There's just something so ripe right now about yeah. where human beings are in our conscious evolution yep. And yep. I, I know that everyone in this space that's been in this space for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, um, we've seen such a shift in where human beings are. I know like people that are starting the journey with us today are so different than the people that were starting the journey with us even five years ago. And oh, yeah. Hunger and desire drive for human beings to gain uh, this information and, and conscious awareness and emotional awareness and all these things. And I just think it's so cool that you guys have taken this hunger and merged it with like the most new age technology to put something in place to kind of drive this even further and faster. Um, and I just love it. Yeah. And I told you like any way that we can be a part of it and support it. Yeah, and uh, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, it's definitely going to happen. And this is what it's about. This is the collaboration. This is the high level collaboration that it's, that this is all about this is bringing high vibrational people together, doing high vibrational things in high vibrational places, whether it be digital space or an actual geographic space or physical space as well. There's so many, we have so many different platforms that we're launching um, at a particular time throughout the next two years. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Some really amazing, amazing projects coming from this. So it's a very exciting time. Um, like anything, it's, you know, we're, we're putting in as much uh, effort as we can. Of course, we're all very inspired individuals. Um, there's eight members in the core team at the mm. moment. Um, our team is rapidly expanding as well with, with advisors that we're getting on board. Um, and it's, yeah, it's happening. It's coming together really nice. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing, man. Steph, how do people uh, stay in your ethos, find out more about you, get connected to you? Yeah, of course, very easily. Uh, StephSafandos.com uh, and all my information is there. Uh, all my um, information for social media is there as well uh but otherwise you can you can find me on social media steph safandos uh relational alchemist on facebook page or just steph safandos came with me on facebook uh instagram's the same twitter's the same it, pinterest is the same it's all the same yeah <laughs> people with unique names have a much much easier time with social media it's so it's so easy yeah you're just gonna fight you're just gonna spell it right that's the only problem <laughs> we'll put we'll put all the links in the show notes for you guys and, awesome. and grab it there um steph just one thing because i i'm i'm sure we're we're in the same path and of growth i'm just curious for me because i know our audience also loves books are there uh, one or two books that you read in the last uh little bit that that have made a huge difference for you yeah I, 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 there's one there's one book that i read many moons many many moons ago two actually um one was better than the other um they were both good though uh walking with the himalayan masters Walking with the Himalayan Masters by Swami Rama was a, it was a beautiful book. It just opened me up. I like it. I, you know, I probably read it like literally 16, 18 years ago. Wow. Um, just, a, just a beautiful book that really got me thinking differently about life, about what's possible, actually, the, poten the potentiality um, of, of, living, of living life. Um, let me have a look. Let me turn around and have a look. I've got, this, this is one of my bookshelves, one of my libraries. I've got them all around the house, my lounge room, my kitchen, they're, they're everywhere. Um, you know, there's so many. Integral Psychology by Ken Wilber. Yeah. Is also, yeah, it's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a deep book, but it's, um, yeah, it's it's powerful, man. It really is. I'm actually right now reading. Let me get the the title right. 
I'm I'm doing another Ken Wilber one, which is yeah about religion. But let me see what it's called exactly. It's not it's sex, called, ecology, and spirituality, is it? It's called the religion of tomorrow. Oh, okay. I don't have that in my yeah. in my library. Yeah, it's a huge book. I mean, I'm listening to it on yeah. an Audible. It's like 28 hours long. Um, Whoa, yeah, but that's yeah. Ken Wilber, you know. Like he's, he's yeah, that's Ken Wilber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, so he's, he's under he's underrated and understated now. So, so when he he is one of the most prominent thinkers of this century and, and of last. He's an amazing human being. Yeah, totally agree. And I think uh, I think Integral is is one of those like must reads it, it it's an undertaking i mean all his work is an undertaking yeah. Yeah. I, I never feel more stupid when i'm reading ken wilber um it's just there's, <laughs> there's a depth to his inquiry that is uh I, yeah. I i honestly i think it's unmatched i don't know that's why when you're saying he's like the prominent thinker I don't know that, you know, we started this like asking great questions. I don't know that anyone asks better questions and somehow comes up with answers than Ken Wilber. So yeah. Uh, awesome. I'm going to definitely check out the uh, walking with the Himalayan masters. I never even heard of that book. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's an old one. It's an old one. Yeah. yeah. Well, the old ones are the good ones. I, I you know, I, this Osho book that I, I took to the jungle mm. with me, it's called the search. And mm. it was one of the first kind of like, Eastern philosophy, spiritual books I read, I probably picked it up in like 10, 12 years ago when I was very, <laughs> very early on in my journey. And even at that time, it was like the most mind bending book. It was just a, an energistic experience, even when I didn't know what energistic experiences were. Like I remember just opening the book and like feeling different. And I had, you know, I'd read like passages here and there uh, through the years, but I never read it uh, front to back again. So I was like, hey, I'm going to Columbia, like what better opportunity? And so every uh, day before ceremony, I would just sit and read. So like instead of, you know, people just like sit and meditate, eyes closed, I actually like sat, opened a book and just read. So I would get, you know, anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour plus of reading as like a foundation to the journey that I was about to go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I highlighted more <laughs> of that book. There's more highlighted than not highlighted in the book. Like the entire book is just lines and scribbles and notes and stuff like that. Uh, I was reading it out loud to people there because it was so in tune to what we were experiencing. Uh, so many conversations about ego and mind and, and all these things. And um, people got so excited every time I would read, I would read that they would be like, read more, read more, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then I came back and I was like, you know what, I'm going to start like a little reading. I read every morning. I was like, so now what we're doing is doing like a little bit of a reading corner every day. I just read like a two to five minute passage from something that I'm reading. Um, just cause I think it's interesting for people to I get like little, yeah, little, little cool, perspectives. Man. So yeah, I just started it on Monday. So we'll see how, uh, how people resonate with that. But, um, Steph, dude, such an honor and privilege. I, I, likewise, you, you, you even look, you have the, like the, the, like you look like my brother. So it's, it's just very interesting, <laughs> uh, dynamic. I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff in the future. Uh, I'm I believe really so. happy we connected and got to share your gold with our listeners. And, uh, yeah, man. Until next time. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Until next time. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next Have It All podcast. Have an amazing week.